Well, my, my name is Ian Cumming. Um, I studied chemical engineering at Loughborough uh, back in the 60s and uh, I did my PhD there uh, working on uh, gas liquid reactors, bubble type reactors, which uh, I think people are still working on enthusiastically. Um, when I left uh, Loughborough in 1972, I think it was, I went and worked in London on liquid natural gas uh, plant design and learned most of my sort of design skills there really. And when I saw LNG going out as a, uh, as a popular um, sort of bit of engineering, and oddly enough has come back again in uh, recent times, I decided to move. And having done a PhD, I found it was very useful in that I was able to move to a research organisation, having worked in a design organisation. And I went to work at Harwell, where I was working as an engineer. I worked on basically uh, a whole lot of projects, some nuclear and some non-nuclear. Um, so I'll just talk about the nuclear ones. I worked on uh, nuclear where we were looking at uh, the chopped up hulls of uh, fuel rods, about recovering the uranium from inside those, uh, which is not a trivial problem, because they're uh, sort of buried in uh, large silos and <coughs> looked at how would one redissolve the uranium that was still left, particularly in the ends of the cans. I spent quite a lot of time working on that project, and I don't think it ever came to any uh, successful conclusion. I then moved on to a much more interesting piece of work. Well, I found it much more interesting because it was liquid uh, processing, mm -hmm. which is always somehow for chemical engineers seems, seems more appropriate. Um, I was working on a European Union funded project which was looking at how could we extract things like cesium, strontium, technetium and other radionuclides which were in a liquid form which couldn't be filtered out by say iron flock or that sort of you know, settling type process. Um, <coughs> and started off in a fume cupboard and we developed uh, uh, filtration using uh, ultrafilters to uh, initially just filtering out alpha material, you know, uranium, plutonium, and then starting adding colloidal ion exchange material, um, which would then attract the, uh, the um, radionuclides. And obviously we had to get the pH right to get the maximum uh, removal of the range of uh, radionuclides. Uh, we then moved it up to a pilot plant uh, a unit, which was processing about a cubic metre a day, not a vast flow, and it was controlled by a very early uh, computer, which we had to program ourselves in machine code, and, uh, and that was running 24 hours a day and we were taking uh, few, uh, waste from the Harwell stores, silos at Harwell, and processing that overnight, uh, which was quite interesting and uh, quite uh, probably more difficult to do now when health and safety has been improved because it was a completely unattended plant uh, overnight. Thankfully, I uh, <coughs> never had any problems and it, uh, and it worked well. And at that time, British Nuclear Fuels were looking for a process which could handle ferric flock, which was containing actinides, and uh, also containing cesium and strontium mainly, technetium, and probably other radionuclides as well. And their first shot at this process was a settling process, uh, which took the uh, ferric flock up to about 10 grams a litre, and then they were going to move on to uh, an ultrafiltration process to take it up to 70 grams a litre or so. Uh, <coughs> and they then became interested in our, in our ultrafiltration process. The uh, 70 gram a litre process was also an ultrafiltration process. Um, but we were working at a higher pressure. And uh, we found that the decontamination factors were orders of magnitude greater 
in the ultrafiltration process. And so a very interesting time in my life was going from, from that lab scale up to pilot scale and then interacting with uh, what was then David McKee, the contractors, and uh, moving on to a pilot scale for nuclear uh, with pumps and uh, membranes which could be uh, uh, handled from above rather than uh, having uh, fittings at below the, uh, the, uh, the modules. And um, so that process, I'll talk a bit more about my lecture, that was uh, then went live in about 1994. It had an incredible effect on the uh, discharges to the um, North Sea. And that really, if I look back over my career as being the, perhaps the highlight, and it's probably made the biggest difference to the world uh, of anything that I've done. Um, I did other processes, um, um, but none others which I think probably uh, have meant so much to me. When I uh, saw that the harbour was going to be run down in about 1990, I then moved up to um, become an academic at Loughborough, and back to where I'd started. And uh, the world goes round in circles. And uh, then I worked on membrane processes, electrical uh, membrane processes, and uh, I had good fun again. But I think I probably won't go into that now. Right. We're still in a very much of a flux as an industry. Uh, the government or politicians have found it difficult to make decisions and uh, how to engage the public in those decisions. But obviously the uh, need for a long-term repository is extraordinarily high because processes like ERP uh, and SIXEP are still generating wastes which are in a fairly good uh, form now but we don't want to go on storing those above ground and there are all the historical wastes which need to be disposed of in a good way. And so I think there's a lot of opportunities in uh, that area of long-term disposal. Um, and I think my view is that, uh, that perhaps thorium reactors might become of interest in the medium to long-term. And I think that would be a very interesting area to work with. In the earlier days of the nuclear cycle, people did look at thorium reactors and some other countries are still looking at that, uh, that sort of cycle. Um, but it has attractions in there's a lot more thorium and perhaps isn't quite so proliferation uh, um, prone yeah. as the uranium uh, cycle. I think those probably are the big, obviously at BNFL at uh, Sellafield, there's a whole lot of history that has to be handled. And if you look in the, uh, the job adverts, they are always apply, they're always uh, adverts for people to go and work in that area.